Praise the Lord. It's good to see everyone here this morning. This has been a wonderful, wonderful camp. Do you agree? Well, I know you can do better than that. One, two, three. Amen. Hallelujah. And the good thing about it is the Lord is not done. <laughs> we still have several more meetings. And you know what? We have meetings after that, and we have gatherings, and we've got, we've got local assemblies, and we've got young peoples, and we've got family altars, and we've got family picnics and church picnics, and we guess it's on and on and on. Praise God. This does not end at this camp. Let's, uh, if you'll stand with me, let's open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you are so good to us. You withhold no good thing from them who ask it of you. Father, we have asked largely and you have given largely. And Father, we thank you for that. Lord, we know that there are things that you have given us in these meetings, things that have started here that we do not even that we are not even yet aware of but things that will be manifested manifested according to your timetable lord things that will bring fruit in season father and we thank you for that lord we pray with all of our hearts that you would cause us to have such a desire in our hearts to lay aside anything that would hold us back, that would be a stumbling block to ourselves or to others. Lord, that we would be willing to step back and let you step in front and lead and guide by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Take away fear of making mistakes or fear that we may do something wrong but just, Lord, let us yield ourselves to you. Let us be free in the spirit. But at the same time, Lord, help us, to, help us to have that desire to submit to those that you have put over us for our protection, for our covering, for our safety. Let, let us submit to one another, Father, that we may learn from one another that we may give way to one another. Lord, we just, this is the desire of our hearts. And we pray, Lord, that you would come down upon us with the presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord, and you would anoint us for that that you have us to do. We pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> If you will just remain standing for a minute, I have a I've asked Marcus, and if he would ask Gay, if they would come up here and lead us in a song that at least, I I'm sure, I, di I didn't know it, and uh, the Indian people didn't know it, but they sang it in one of the services in Mangalore, and it was such a blessing. And it's, I think it just says in a very simple chorus, you, you come, you and Gay come, please. It says in such a simple way, the desire of our hearts. And the song is entitled, I think, Let the Spirit of the Lord Come Down. Do you know that song? It's on page 78 in the back section. I don't know whether you have a back section in all of those books or not. But it's a beautiful little chorus. It won't take you but a, a second or two to learn it. But it is beautiful. I think it just speaks to what we want this morning. Let the Spirit of the Lord come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord come down. Let's get on the key. Yep, yep. You're up higher. Let, let the Spirit of the Lord come down. Let the Spirit. 
Spirit of the Lord come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord 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 from heaven come down. Let the Spirit of the Sorry about that. Okay, let's sing it again. Maybe you just kind of want to, maybe you just kind of want to close your eyes, maybe. If you want to raise your hands. But just, just picture, if you will, somehow that Spirit of the Lord coming like a dove and just resting on our shoulders and whispering in our ear that He loves us and He wants to lead us in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Well, that's where our happiness will be. Not in these, all these other ways, but as the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us and leads us and loves us. Hallelujah. Let's just sing together. Let the Spirit of the Lord
Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. There's a... What's this song about the river? Oh, river of God. Flow down on me. Where is that? It's in the back, yeah. Somebody find it and tell us where it is. You know it? Oh, you're going to sing something. Okay, 46 in the back. Okay, well just hold that for a minute. Our sister has a song that she wants to sing. Those of you that were in Big Spring, Texas some years ago at our camp meeting, our sister Mama Lou sang this. And it has blessed me so much. I have sung it over and over and over again.
been a lot of yokes broken by the Holy Spirit. And they can remain broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. And there may still be some that are still struggling with some yokes that need to be broken. Holy Spirit is with us every day, every hour. He doesn't just come and say, okay, you've got to get some water is stirred now. If you don't get it now, it's too late. He's always there. He's always present. He's always there to hear our call and our cry. Let's sing it again. time, but I can't help it. I'm sorry. I want to sing it a couple of times, and then after you get warmed up, we're going to do the arm link, and we're going to flow like the river. Everybody remember how to do that? You like to do it, right? We're linked together. We're one body. There's thumbs, and there's fingers, and there's toes, there's noses, there's ears, there's livers, there's hearts, kidneys, blood vessels, the whole thing. We just got to flow together. All right, here we go. Oh, river of God, flow down on me. Oh, river of God. Cephas Ford, if he'll come up here. Uh, I was not saying I better come. Yeah, come on. This time when we sing it, I want us to clap like they do in the Caribbean. <laughs> On the offbeat. On the offbeat? You know what I'm talking about. Okay. You've, I've watched you and you have, you have gladly conformed to our way of clapping <laughs> since you've been here. Yeah. Yeah. But you, that's right. In Rome, do as the Romans do, right? In Canada, Canada do as Canadian. Well, Amen. this time we're going to return the favor, and we're going to clap like the Caribbeans clap. Okay. But it's probably going to be kind of mixed up to start with. 
Yeah, I don't, so, like, I don't like to spread confusion. Yeah, well, but you can help us out of it, right? All right, here we go. All right, you, you, you have to do it now. I can't do it either. All right. Oh, river of God. again but then we're going to go into the second part you can clap for the first part but then we get the second part you got to lock arms and we're going to kind of alternate rows you know so you're not all going one way you just kind of got this done. okay re re ready oh river of god Brother Cephas. Appreciate that. You may be seated. <clears throat> Robert, if you will come up and let us take these prayer requests. If you'll take those two, uh, I'll go ahead while you read them. This first prayer request is submitted by Dave Wright from Portland Assembly. And uh, the prayer is for Bonnie Lusk. Pray for her back and neck. Um, doctors 
Uh, doctors have next to nothing for her. Over the past couple of years, she tries to attend services in our assembly uh, in, in Portland, but is unable oftentimes due to the pain. We have prayed for her many times at our services, but she needs the prayers of the body of Christ. So I, I will ask you to stand again, if you will, and we will, we will pray as the body of Christ collectively. We don't, have, we don't link our arms like we did for the song, but we link our hearts together as we pray for this dear sister. There's lots of people here that know what back pain is like and it can be really debilitating. So let's just bow our hearts in prayer. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for Bonnie Lusk this morning. Lord, we know uh, that you can reach your hand across the miles around the globe, all over the world, Lord, to touch those that the body of Christ has brought to the throne of grace. Lord, we pray for her. We pray for her back, Lord, yes, that somehow yes, you would touch yes. her uh, you, by the healing power of your Holy Spirit and that you would make her every whit whole. Lord, even now, begin to ease that pain. Lord, that she may be able to come to the services and testify there of the glory of God and the touch of healing that you have given to her body. Lord, we join our hearts together and agree together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This request is from David Amundsen of the Edmonton Assembly, and we are praying for Mr. Zeus Zaghi. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Please pray um, over a handkerchief for Zeus. Do you have any handkerchiefs? Do we have any handkerchiefs? Yes. Um, he has had a heart attack on September the 15th. He's had heart surgery and uh, had six stints. It's endu he's enduring much stress and tells, tells um, David it's causing heart pain. Well, the great physician is here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we're going to pray and believe the Lord for Zeus Zaki. I hope I'm pronouncing it. Y-A-G-H-I. Am I pronouncing the name right? Yagi. 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 Sounds like Japanese origin. Anyway, um, this is nothing new. This is what the Apostle Paul did. Yeah. And this is what we're going to agree. So let's look to the Lord. Praise, Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we know that you are the great healer. We have experienced you in the past. And so we look to you as we lay hands upon, these, upon this handkerchief uh, that your anointing will flow and your spirit will reach uh, to Zeus in Jesus' name, that yes, he Lord. will recover completely, Lord. Touch him even while he, even when he ever he gets that pain. He will put his trust in you, Lord. Father, we thank you for bringing him closer to you, for drawing him with the cords of love that he will experience, uh, your love, your healing, and your presence in his life. Bless him and be with him as we lay your, your hands, Lord, on this handkerchief. And we thank you. May the nail-scarred hands of Christ rest, O oh God. And we thank you that every drop of blood that was shed in Calvary's cross was shed for our healing. So, Father, we claim that healing tonight, today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, amen. Praise God. Amen. Who should we give this? David. David. You come and get the handkerchief, please. Is he here? <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, we have another one. This is from Kristen Amundsen of the Penticton British Columbia Assembly. Please pray for a dear friend of mine. She's recently lost her marriage, followed shortly after by the death of her father. She's depressed and lonely. She needs guidance, but seems to have closed herself off to God's God due to anger and bitterness. She has stopped speaking to her mom and most people. Please pray that her depression lifts, her anger loses its hold on her, her heart softens towards God. Please pray for me, that's Christian, also that I may do my best to be a support for her. I love her dearly. Mm. So this is a two-pronged approach in our prayer here. We're going to pray that Christian be really used and, and this friend um, with, her, with the difficulty she's going through with her marriage yes. and pray that that depression would be lifted. Amen. Amen. Let's believe God. Hallelujah. Praise hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Praise Lord, we thank you that burdens are lifted at Calvary. Lord, we know not know of any other way. And Lord, we pray for this dear friend of Christian at this time. And Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you'll reach down your hands and touch this friend in Jesus' name, Lord. <coughs> Lift the burdens, Lord. You came to undo the heavy burdens, to set the captive gloriously free. And Lord, that, he, that she may walk in the freedom yes. of life. Praise Minister God. to her even right now, Lord, for whom the Son of Man set free is free indeed. Yes, we claim her freedom of our mind freedom of her spirit freedom oh god psychologically socially that she will be able lord to rejoice in you yes. touch her at this time lord Hallelujah. we pray for the sorrows that she's gone through yes. and the difficulties of a broken marriage lord we know you can fix anything and so we thank you for moving on her behalf in jesus name lord father you see this uh, this person here she has been withdrawn socially and lord we pray you'll minister Oh, we pray for the, the, the pouring out of the love of Christ, uh, that you will use Christian in such a way that she will reach out to her, dear God. Yes, we amen. thank you, dear Father, for this is a ministry here. And Lord, this is the great work that you have given unto us, yes. your people. We thank you, Lord, Amen. as the body, as your body, we agree one with another. And we thank you for meeting and ministering to this need. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, Glory to God. God. Glory Amen. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This morning I wanted to believe God well with us all, believing together. We have a sister in St. Vincent, Sister Miranda Samuel. She lost one of her breasts. Right at this time she is doing chemotherapy for cancer. So we want to lift her up before the Lord this morning. And those who are there watching on live stream, we want you also to pray with us. With God, all things are possible. So we can just raise our hands, send it over the seas and over the land, right to the land of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Heavenly Father, we come unto you this morning. Lord, we are thankful that you sent Jesus and we are thankful that Jesus was very obedient unto you. And he paid the price on the cross of Calvary for our redemption, our freedom, our liberty. Yea, as Isaiah proclaimed, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with your stripes, we are healed. With this stripe, oh God, we are healed. So we lift our sister Miranda Samuel unto you this morning. And we pray in the name of Jesus yes, Lord. that your healing virtue will continue to flow into her body, oh God. Yes, Jesus. Yea, Lord, that the very life of thee will come alive in her. Yea, Lord, the streams of that river, that river, Lord, that fountain that flow. And in that river there is cleansing the in that river there is a life. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We believe it this morning, oh God. 
we come on today with all of our heart with all of our soul and with all of our strength and we claim that healing we claim that deliverance and we thank you for doing it in jesus name amen and amen amen Praise the Lord. While we're standing in this, in this moment of looking to the Lord, there is a brother down in South America there, Lloyd David. His son, um, John L., um, he's re he has requested prayers. His son seems to be under the influence of evil powers. But we know that uh, our God is able. He's able to set the captive free. He's able to bring about that deliverance. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we link our hearts and our minds together, and we pray that you'll take a grip of this young man, and in Jesus' name, we break the works of darkness. Hallelujah. And, Lord, we pray that you will liberate him and set him completely free Hallelujah. in his mind. Lord, that you will set him free in his spirit there, Lord, in Jesus' name, for we know there's no distance in prayer. And so, Lord, we thank you for taking a hold of this young man and bringing him to you. Lord, that you will draw him with the cords of love and bring him to you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for taking control of his mind, taking control of everything, dear God, that surrounds him there. In Jesus' name, oh God, we Amen. thank you for doing such a work. Lord, at this time, as we stand in the gap, we think of the many teenagers, many prodigals, prodigal sons, and prodigal daughters, Lord, that we know, oh God, Lord, Lord, we are crying out to you. Hallelujah. Father, we know you're calling them home. Yes, you're Lord. calling them back home to the Father. Hallelujah. And Lord, we pray that you will touch them right now. Right now, wherever they are in that far country. Lord, that you will arrest them in Jesus' name. Arrest them by the power of your Holy yes, Spirit. Lord. Touch their lives and cause them, dear God, Hallelujah. to come back to the Father's house. Lord, we thank you that this moment may be a 180 degrees turn around that they may come back to the father's home lord bring them in bring them in oh god we thank you lord we're claiming them in jesus name and lord we thank you for the victory we thank you for ministering unto them oh we thank you that they will come and confess yes. and can truly really say back to the father and home oh dear god we thank you for doing it we thank you for breaking the chains the habits on doing the heavy burdens, setting their minds and hearts free. And we thank you for wooing them back in Jesus' name. For accept your spirit, draw them, Lord. They will not be drawn. So we rest our confidence in you, Lord. And this day, this moment, we as the, as the house of God, we join together in such a prayer. Yes. And thank you for answering, Lord. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Praise God. Back to my father and home. Back to my father and home. I will arise and go.
and his mind will be tender towards the church. What you just tell me, can you, would you mind just saying a few words about that? I'll try to. Yeah, yeah, I'll just do that. I'll stand here with you. This morning there's such a spirit of deliverance here. Come in here. And I was thinking to my brother, Jerry Kump, a lot of you know him. He left the move many, many years ago through something that happened and he's been very bitter towards the church and acts like he doesn't even know it exists. As a young man, he was very influential in the church for the young people. He prophesied, he sang in the spirit and this thing happened and he just left just like that and went out into the world. Uh, a couple of years ago, he was very sick and uh, he had cancer. He was in the Edmonton Hospital. Uh, his daughter called me and I flew out immediately and I spent three days with him. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. And one night I said to him, he was in such pain, I said, would you like me to pray with you? And because and, the Lord led me to say that. And uh, he said, I would love it. Mm -hmm. And we prayed together and it was the most wonderful time you could imagine. He held me and told me he loved me, which is something he's never done. And we worshiped the Lord together. It was just wonderful. It was just like he was back how many years ago. Now, pain can cause weakness because the next day that all seemed to be gone. <laughs> and uh, we never talked. He wasn't open to the things of the Lord ever again. I keep in touch with him all the time. And uh, I was actually going to go to see him later uh, this afternoon, but I wanted to stay for the meeting. But uh, when, when uh, we were praying for the people, and I, there just seemed to be such a spirit of deliverance there, and I just thought of Jerry, and he's, uh, he's old now, he's 81 years old. Um, he's like a young man though, but he's, he's cancer free, 100% cancer free, so that had to be the Lord. Praise God. And uh, I just really want us to uphold him. He was a member of the body, and the Lord hasn't forgotten him. And there was a lot of things uh, b back many years ago when he left, no one went after him. And there were a lot of things that maybe weren't like they would be today. So I, I would just ask that we could pray for him that he would come back yeah. and his heart would be softened. Yes. Thank God. you. Amen. You just stay, you stay here okay. with us for a second. Brother Murph, would you come to this? Our Heavenly Father, yes, Lord, we just praise you and thank you this morning for the testimony that we have just heard. For Father, your arm is not shortened. No, that's right. That you cannot save and that you cannot draw. Your ear is not heavy that you uh, do not hear. And Father, we know that you have heard uh, what has been expressed this morning. And Father, we pray for Jerry. Yeah. We pray, Father, uh, that you would make yourself uh, ever more real to him. Yes, Father, that you will Lord. come to him uh, in that special way. And he will see you uh, as you really are. Yes. And Father, you will draw him back uh, to yourself uh, in a way that you have not, uh, that he has not known before. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray uh, that this uh, sister of his uh, will have Amen. tremendous influence uh, yes. in her communication Anointed, with him. Father. Father, that you will fill her uh, with your anointing. Uh, yes. Jesus. with your power yes, uh, and may the words that she speaks uh, be the words uh, of the spirit uh, for your words do not return to you void uh, but they go forth uh, for what they are designed to accomplish yes, father. father we now ask your blessing uh, upon jerry we pray that you would be with him father uh, and father that in the days that lie ahead uh, that there will be good news that will issue forth, uh, that he has drawn closer uh, 
and closer to you uh, and closer to the family, uh, his natural family and to the family of God. Amen. Father, we pray this now in your precious and holy name. Bless the family. Yes. Bless yes. Jerry, we pray. Bless his sister, our yes. God, we Bless pray Shirley. in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Sunbow is going to minister this morning, but I've asked if and he gets his uh, materials. I'd like to wait just a minute. I'd like to pray for my wife. <laughs> uh, she's, not, she's not feeling well, and I understand there's some others in the camp who may be touched with a little uh, bug or something. So uh, when he returns, I'd just like to have prayer for, for her. Father, it is not a foreign thing to us to have seen uh, the enemy uh, attempt to make his inroads into the very place uh, where you are moving uh, mightily among your people. Yes, Lord. And Father, uh, we this morning ask that you would raise up your standard Yes, against Lord. the enemy. Hallelujah. Father, in all his works, in all his ways, uh, for as Jesus said, uh, he has nothing in me. No. Father, he has nothing in us. And so this morning, dear Lord, we bring uh, Jan before you. Yes. Father, uh, whatever this uh, is, uh, whatever bug it is that has been causing the problem, we know that you are greater. And Father, we just pray that you would touch her now. Touch the area of her need, our God. Let these things dissipate uh, before the mighty hand of the Lord. Uh, for surely you are the he healer of all of our sicknesses, uh, of all of our diseases, uh, of all of our afflictions. Uh, for you say in your word, I am the God that healeth thee. Yes. We stand, Lord, on your promises this morning. We stand on those promises for Jan this morning. You, and we pray that your hand would move. She would feel that anointing even now flowing through her body. And Father, there will be a good report as a result of the prayers that have gone up from the saints. Oh, we bless her this morning. We thank you, Father, that she's been able to be here. We thank you, dear Lord, uh, that she's been among us. Uh, and, and we thank you for her faithfulness and the faithfulness of her dear husband. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I'm a technological disaster, so if this isn't hooked on right, I guess you'll hear it, and someone will uh, come to my rescue. I said to my wife this morning as I came in, <clears throat> I may minister this morning. I may minister. I want you to know that 
as we meet before the service, we always say, who will stand ready? We do not want to interfere in any way in what the Lord wants to do. We want the Lord's agenda, not our own. Because the agenda of the mind of man will lead to failure, to disaster. It will never accomplish what God wishes to accomplish. And so she said to me, I will pray for you that your back will not give you so much pain while you're, while you're up there. And I said to her, that's fine, I appreciate that, but don't forget to pray that I'll have something to say. <clears throat> That's far more important than how I am feeling. Because I'll never forget what Brother Merv quoted one time, Brother Merv Smith. Blessed is the man whom having nothing to say can be persuaded not to say it. <laughs> and so maybe you're hearing that man this morning I trust not, but the Lord will have to take anything that I might have to say and, 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 and give it to you in a special way because words always fail, and my words certainly will fail as they, as they have in the past. But the anointing doesn't fail. The anointing do, does what the, what the anointing is so well equipped and qualified to do, and that's to touch hearts of men and women, whether it is by prophecy, whether it is in prayer, whether, whether it is singing in the Spirit, uh, or singing the songs that we know so well, the Lord does what He is so adept and good at doing, and that is touching hearts. It is, he is good at setting free. He is the deliverer, hallelujah, of all of our sicknesses, of all of our diseases, of all of the formidable obstacles that might stand in our way. He is good at deliverance, hallelujah. And that's what He will do for every one of us. We open our hearts and He comes in. Did someone, want, did someone say, all you have to do is open your heart a crack and He's there? to meet you right where you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, usually, usually I'm pretty prepared uh, to minister something. And sometimes, I'm not. You know, I don't know these other brethren, have, I guess they don't have the experience of this camp. Uh, I didn't know. I, I just didn't know. I don't feel... Uh, good about being here this morning. I don't feel very, very uh, ready. Uh, do we ever feel ready? But, but you know, when, uh, when we went to the funeral of, of this dear young lady, your mind cannot help but go back to a similar experience. If you have lost a loved one, if you've lost someone close to you, you can't help but think about that which you went through yourself at that time. And although it's been, I suppose, pretty near 50 years since my wife passed away, a lot of water has gone under the bridge. A lot of time has lapsed. But that kind of came fresh. Fresh to me when I heard the news of this tragedy. You might think I'm going to say a strange thing now, but I'm going to say it anyway. I was teaching a grade 12 class. I was an English teacher. Some of you might wonder at that when you listen to me talk. But anyway, I was, I was teaching English. And I was teaching 
a little bit, I just remember that I was teaching uh, them about poetry. I'm a kind of a poetry lover, and uh, I wanted to teach them a little bit about writing poetry. Well, you say you can't teach someone to write poetry. That's an innate ability. Well, to a great extent it is. Anyway, I taught this class, and I sat down at my desk while they were working on it. And I was thinking, this is a pretty tough assignment that I've given to these kids. They're not kids, they're young adults. And I decided, as was my habit at times, I would do the assignment with them. I asked them to write poetry, I'm going to write poetry. At that time, my heart was heavy. Time was, was laborious. Heavy on my hands, maybe, would be another way of putting it. But I began to write. You know, there's something about writing, there's something about expressing yourself, whether it is verbally or whether it is in writing, that helps you release something in, inside of you. You know what I'm talking about? Some people can take pen and paper and do that. Others will have to do it in an oral and, and, and expressive way like that. To me, it was writing that did that for me. And I wrote this little short poem. And you say, you know, you're talking to spiritual people here and you're giving them a secular poem. Well, you think of it as you wish. But all I know is this, that it drained some of that sorrow, some of that inner feeling away from me. And I felt better as a result of a few lines. Time was the title of it. And I don't know what the title of what I'm going to say to you to this morning is. You can call it time, you can call it knowing the time, or you can give it whatever title you want to. I don't care. Time. Time is water eroding rock. Time is the healer of my sorrow. Just a minute. I think I, you know, I, I, I missed it. I got it written down here. Time is water eroding rock. Time is the striking of the clock. Time is the healer of my sorrow. Time is what will waste tomorrow. Time is you and I. We live and we die. Maybe pretty secular. I hadn't walked with the Lord very long at that time. But I'll tell you something. He was my strength at that time. He was, he and the body of Christ so ministered to me that I will never forget it. It was such a blessing for me to see the family gather here the other morning. And for those prayers and for those prophecies to go over them is I remember the same thing. Drawing strength from the body of Christ. Drawing strength from the one that said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Hallelujah. And he is as good as his word. And so, we talk a lot about time. Somebody was telling me that was watching on the live stream, tell Sunbo to stand still because <laughs> the camera can't follow him. Well, Am I supposed to adjust myself to the, to the technology or can I just do as I want to do? Anyway, they'll, they'll, they'll catch up with me. Time is something that we talk a lot about. 
I would dare say if you, if you counted every time that you used the word time in a day, you would be surprised how often you use it. What time is it? What time is it? Is there enough time to your, your, your child? It's time for you to go to bed. It's time. There won't be enough time to accomplish this task. Someone asks you to do something, I don't have time. How often do we use the word without really thinking very much about it? But time is a really important commodity to every one of us. And I dare say that most of us don't have enough of it. Do you have things, do you have projects in your life that you want to sometime get time to do? <laughs> but you've never yet found time to do it. Because you've been doing other things or other things get in the way of you doing what you would like to do. They're just, they just take priority, you see. Like, uh, I, I have... Let me tell you a little project that I have in mind. I don't think Irene will mind. Uh, she, she's pretty used to me. You know, in a few days, it's 47 years. She's not going to change. She hasn't changed me much in 47. She's likely not going to... It's not really likely going to happen in the next year or two. <laughs> and, you know, I haven't changed her much either. <laughs> but we like each other anyway. <laughs> I have written her... A book of poems. I can, I, can, I, can, I can form a book of poems. And I would like, I have them all. I, I don't think she bothers keeping them, but I do. <laughs> I have them all. And I have them all in a nice little package. Or, uh, but, but they're in no order. And they perhaps need cleaning up. And someday, if I live long enough, I'd like to put those together to her, for her. See, this is a gift, Irene, I'm telling these people about before you know. <laughs> I'd like to put them together and give them to her. Yeah. There's nobody else that would be interested in them because it's kind of poetic dribble, but it's romantic and uh, it's got all, all kinds of nice things in it because I, I like her. <laughs> I, I love her. And so... If you, brethren, would give me a little time. <laughs> give me a little time. This is what I want to do for my wife. Oh, no, you're hearing me, aren't you? <laughs> so I know what you're going to do. At our next meeting, you're going to say, Mervyn, why don't you take six months off? <laughs> I'll grab it like a shot, let me tell you. But now I'm just being a little bit foolish. We speak a lot about time. And my, uh, my Bible talks about time. It, uh, God's time or concept of time is quite different than, than ours. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. That's quite a statement, isn't it? Like, we don't really think in those kinds of terms, do we? Some day to, sometimes a day to us is a pretty long time. And sometimes it's a very, very short time. Isn't it a strange thing? If you are in a hurry, time goes so quick. Five minutes ago, gone. If you're waiting for something. <laughs> if you're waiting for something. It takes an eternity. Do you know why time goes slower when you are younger than when you're older? Because when you're younger, you're always waiting for something. You're waiting to the day when you get your driver's license. You're waiting for the day when, when, when I've got to be this old to do this. This day never comes. Because it's a waiting time. You know, like I've often said, how long a minute is? 
Depends on which side of the bathroom door you're on. <laughs> it can be a long minute, or it can be a pretty short minute. God's time and our time are very, very different. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as, a, as yesterday, when it, is in, when, it, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. A thousand years we're talking about here. I'm going to read um, uh, so God's schedule is quite different from ours. I'm going to read uh, a fir from 1 Thessalonians. Uh, the uh, fifth chapter. Beginning at the first verse, I'm reading from the King James Version. Um, and it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. But you brethren, but you sisters, are not in darkness, that they should overtake you as a thief. What does the scripture say? I have taken you out of darkness, and where has he placed us? In his marvelous light. Light is a wonderful thing. You know, the reason why you can see me right now, standing here, walking around, is because of light. We shut all of the lights off in here. If we put blinds on those windows, you wouldn't know whether I was here or not. Because we would all be in darkness. You can see in darkness, in light, and others can see you. Why do you think so many crimes are committed in darkness? Right? Because the perpetrator doesn't want to be seen, that's why. He can maybe get away with it in the darkness where he wouldn't get away with, away with it in the light. I have taken you out of darkness, the darkness of your own mind, and I have enlightened you. I have given you of my marvelous light. That is light whereby we can see, whereby we can see spiritually. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's continue with that, that uh, chapter there a little bit. Ye are the children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. But let us watch and be sober. I don't think this is talking about natural sleep. We need that. I think it's talking about spiritual sleep. In my experience, I've been pretty good at putting people to sleep. <laughs> you get a grade, a grade uh, 11 or 12 class, and, you got, and you're going to teach English, well, I'll tell you they're dropping like flies. <laughs> because... What's, what's this for? This, this, you know, this is no good to me. I'm going to be a plumber. I'm going to be an electrician. Well, I think you're going to read some instructions. I remember one time. You, you'll forgive the stories, will you? Uh, I'm terrible for stories, and I get off the track and, you know, into, into, the, into the weeds. I, uh, I was the principal of the school, so I had a little bit of, little bit of authority. 
<coughs> My vice principal told me one time, Sunbo, it's time for a little authority around here, and you've got as little as any. <laughs> so, pretty well put me in my place. But I decided that everyone, I may have told you this before, but you've forgotten. <laughs> everyone that goes through the high school will take at least a semester of typing or typewriting. And I made it stick. Boys, girls, didn't matter. Semester of typing. You wouldn't believe the hue and cry. What do you think I'm going to be? A secretary? Some boy would come and tell, tell me. What do you think I'm going to be? A secretary? Why do I have to do this? This is just a wor favorite word was stupid. This is just stupid. Son, you never know when you might need it. I wonder how many of those people would come back today and say, I was wrong. I wonder, that's before computers, you see. I wonder how many. You know what I wish some of them do, would do, and I don't think anybody has ever done it. Mr. Sunbo, that's because that's what they called me. You know what you did for me in grade nine? I am so thankful that you made us go through that. No, uh, they've forgotten all about it. But they're using it today. They're using it today. Hallelujah. We get on with the text. I hope I'm not putting you to sleep. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day. You hear that? Let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. What other hope is there but the hope that we have in Christ? As someone mentioned here earlier, what hope is there in the political system? It can come crashing down anytime. I know we're to pray for our leaders. And occasionally, I'll be honest with you, and occasionally I remember to. And I, I think I've got to improve that way. But you know, our hope is not there. There was a time in my own life when I thought, <clears throat> this world is in such a big mess if we could just get everybody educated, we'd fix the problem. Big mistake. I'm not against education. It's not the solution to the problem, is what I'm saying. It's far from the solution. Have we ever had a people so educated as we have today? Irene, how many people, somebody, was it you that told me how, what, how many, uh, the percentage of Canadians that have degrees? Was it you? Do you remember how many? 80-some percent? Boy, it sounds high, but it might be. I think Amer uh, Americans are around 33 percent or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know, I, I take those shots and I, I shouldn't. <laughs> The hope of salvation. Wow. You have a hope that there are millions of people in this world who know, not, who know nothing of. Praise the Lord. I believe there's a day when they will know about it, but they don't yet. Ninth verse. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. <clears throat> I'd like to pause on that scripture for a moment. 
And I'll read it once more. Jesus Christ who died for us. That whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Amen. Now, you might call my next statement a lack of faith. I know I need a lot more faith. And I don't... I think you might run a little short on it from time to time. I remember, you know, I kind of troubled about this whole, you know, passing on or, or going on into life and just, just how that all works. And I remember when we moved to the grounds here in 2010, <clears throat> we, we came at the end of July of 2010. So it'll be six years here pretty soon that we've been on these grounds. And it's been a wonderful place for us to, uh, to live. I was turning 70 in a few days at that time. So you know exactly how old I am now, if your math is any good at all. <clears throat> I remember thinking this, and I don't think I, I think I even said it, perhaps in a, maybe locally here. No, I'm saying it sort of nationally. I remember, I remember thinking and saying, after I reached 70, the Lord has been as good as His promise to me. I have been given three score and ten years. And whatever He gives to me, in addition to those years, they are bonus years. Do you know how long David lived? I'm sure some of you do, some of you scholars. But I'll just tell you. He, did, he lived a little longer than that. He lived 70 years. David lived, David got three score and ten. He became king at 30 and he ruled Israel for 40 years, 70. Do you know how old Solomon was? We sometimes think of these patriarchs being ancient. I'll give you a couple examples where they weren't. David is one. The scripture might speak of him. Be, I mean, he was old in terms of experience. There's no question about that. But actual age, he wasn't all that old. Who here thinks uh, 70 is old? Young people, keep your hands down. Who thinks here at 70 years old? I didn't feel much different when I was 70 than I was 60. I don't think. It might have looked different. Well, Solomon was 52. Because he, <clears throat> he became king at 12 years of age, I expect he would have liked, although he was a, a wise young man, no doubt, I expect he had some advisors. And he ruled for 40 years. So my arithmetic says 12 and 40 are 52. And then he died. God! Now, I see the people with their, their iPads here are checking to see if I'm right about this. <laughs> and, and, uh, and that's all right. I don't mind being, I don't mind being wrong. That's, but that's the way I've got it figured. You know, but let me, let me go on a little bit about that. You know, we, I, think, I think that is looking at things pretty much from the, from the natural point of view. Three score and ten. If by reason of health, four score. Some of you have reached four score. You have four score plus. You've had lots of bonus years. You may have reached the four score and ten. Some reach five score. 
But I want to tell you, whether it's 70 or 80 or 90 or 100, it's a short trip. It's a short trip. Brother uh, Richard's dad said, hardly worth getting out of bed for. (laughs) But nevertheless, God wants us to pack into whatever years we have just exactly what He wants from us. That's why He has gifted you. That's why He has spoken to you. That's why He has drawn you from where you were to where you are today. Because He has had something in mind for you. And He wants you to carry it out. And you know, I've often thought, however God is going to accomplish this, but there will be that day when He will bestow His life upon His people. Praise the Lord. When the, as we heard in the early days, when the healing lines will not so much be for those within the church as it will be for those that are without. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because Israel walked without a sick one among them. Is that not right? Amen. And he said also, there will come this day when I will no longer put the diseases of Egypt upon my people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We need to look at these positive things and not just at things from the natural point of view. I hope for more bonus years. You know why? Because if I have more bonus years, maybe I'll be living at the time when life brings forth in all of its glory. And I want to be part of that. Hallelujah. But I know this. If the Lord has something else in mind, If the Lord wishes to take me by the way of the grave, I'm not going to miss anything because of what that Scripture says that I just read to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, Glory to God. Now let us go to Romans. The 13th chapter and uh, verses... uh, Where's my Bible here? No, verses 1... Uh, No, pardon me. It's Romans, the 13th chapter, verses 11 to 14. And that knowing the time that it is high time to awake out of sleep, high time is an urgent time. That it is high time to wake out of sleep. It's not a time for for spiritual slumber. We sometimes use that expression, kind of in a natural way, that it is a crucial time. Well, I think we sometimes use it in a spiritual sense, although we may not know just what the time is. But He does not keep us ignorant. He gives us signals and He gives us signs. And I think we are to pay attention to those. I know no man knoweth the day nor the hour. Scripture says that. I understand that. But nevertheless, He says, He does not want to keep us in darkness. He wants us to walk in His marvelous, in his marvelous light. It's high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Now, isn't that an interesting statement? Now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. I pondered that a little bit. And I thought of things like Jesus hung on the cross. One of the, uh, one of the uh, criminals that hung there beside him said to him, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what did Jesus say? Today, today, thou, you shall be with me in paradise. It would seem that salvation was very, very instant. It wasn't something that was far off. And salvation, I believe, is instant. You give your heart 
to the Lord today, you are saved today. Salvation is yours today. Amen? But, but, this scripture may be more talking about the transformation, the regeneration, the change from the natural to the spiritual, because the transformation is going on. It is a little by little. It is line upon line. And it is precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. I liked what I think it was Brother Richard said. We, we, <clears throat> we may not be mature, but we're not infants. And, and I believe that with all of my heart. That something between, between the, the, the moving of the Spirit or, or whenever you came to the Lord, it doesn't matter if it was here at North Battleford or wherever it was, people are, are saved in many, many different places. And we praise God and thank God for that. Hallelujah. But you know, I think there are maybe people who think in terms of the salvation experience only. And that is absolutely a primary and first step. No question about that. But just as, if I could use a, a brief example, and you've heard these before, but just as that little grandson of mine, you know what Andy can talk about? No, was it Andy? No, it was uh, Marcus can talk about his grandson, and, and Richard can talk about his. I can too. Because I have one or two of those. Five, I think. Last time we counted. He's, uh, he's a little over one. This the last one. And he's maturing. Is he mature? Far from it. What do we do when he comes? I'll tell you what I do. I get everything put up to a place where he can't reach it that's of any importance to us. You know, if he gets a hold of the television remote, he'll have that so thing so jimmied up, I'll never get back to the stations that I want to, want to find. Everything that's on the coffee table will be ripped off the coffee table. But there was a day when he could not do that. He could go nowhere except where someone carried him. Today, he carries himself. And in far too many places to suit me. He appears from nowhere. I slip into the bedroom. Before I've got the door closed, he's in behind me. I don't want him there. You know, spiritually speaking, we were babes. But God does not want to keep us there. He has no desire that we be immature children, but mature sons of God, doing His will, walking in His ways, listening to His voice, and just with a, such a willing and obedient heart that we delight to do His will and desire to do exactly what He wants us to do. Are we there yet? I don't think so. But if whatever that thing is in your heart, what, if those kinds of desires are in your heart, the Holy Spirit will bring it to pass because that's what He is about. Hallelujah. Now this is a, a Romans. This is Romans. And uh, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. I believed that, the, 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 see, it says, it says this, that uh, do not be conformed to the world. Oh, the world loves to conform you. I think Brother uh, Miller was talking about that earlier. The, the world loves to conform you. They want you to fit right into their mold. Just be part of us. Don't waste your time going in another direction. 
But Jesus says, or the Word says, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Turn not to the left hand, nor turn to the right, but walk ye steadfastly onward in the light of the pathway that I have shown you and that I will lead you in. Hallelujah. So, for now is our salvation nearer than when we, than when we, uh, we, than when we believed. Now is this transformation process going on and on and on until that day comes when we shall come forth in His very likeness and in His image. Hallelujah. Salvation is our birth experience, but transformation is an ongoing growth experience. From the babe to maturity, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. The armor of light. Let us walk honestly, decently that is, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering or lewdness or lustfulness, or lustful behavior, if you like, and wantonness, but in strife, not in strife and in envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh for, to fulfill the lusts thereof. What is the armor of light? The armor of light is the Lord Jesus Christ. Be clothed in that garment. The garment, as someone spoke of, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He provides the garments that we can put on and that we can wear. You know something? The garment that they wanted to put on David when he went to meet Goliath wasn't going to fit. Period. I think it was Saul's armor, wasn't it? Imagine, here we've got a stripling. We've got a boy, you might say, putting a man's armor. He says, get this off. I'm using my own term. Get this off of me. This was, the, this was a fleshly thing. This wasn't of the Spirit. David was coming before Goliath. Not with a spear, a sword, and a shield. He was coming before Goliath as I, I, I can't give you the exact words. He, he said, I come before you in the name of the Lord and in the name of the, of the host of the armies of Israel. That's how I come before you. You come before me with a sword and a spear and a shield. You see, they didn't work. There was an Achilles heel here. There was a vulnerable spot here. And the stone found the spot. One stone. Bingo. The flesh. The flesh will not do the job. It was the Spirit of God that was with David. It was the Spirit of God that helped that stone to find its place that will do the job that it was necessary to do. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on that armor. It is the armor of light. It is the armor of life. It is the armor of truth. It is the way. For he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The truth shall set you free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. To put on the Lord Jesus Christ means to possess the very nature of the very characteristics of Christ. That list is far too long for me to put, to put into, into words 
or into writing? Let me name a few. His truth, His righteousness, mine is as filthy rags in His sight. His righteousness is all that we need. You know what righteousness is? You look at the root of a word to find out what it means sometimes. The main part of the word, and the main part of righteousness is right, isn't it? It's the state of being right. Not in your own mind, not in your own deeds, but in those that are of Christ. That is true righteousness. That is true rightness. And cannot fail. So, it's putting on His righteousness. His peace. He was the Prince of Peace. His compassion. He looked at the multitude and He had compassion for the multitude. He saw that some were sick and they needed healing. He looked at others and He saw sheep without a shepherd. What a, what a sad thing that is. I have known people, and I think you probably have, they are sheep without a shepherd. I know he is the master shepherd. But under him, he has appointed shepherds. We need not be sheep without shepherds. His love was demonstrated over and over again as He provided the example to us. His forgiving Spirit. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's a pretty hard thing to do in the condition and state Christ was in. But He did it. And I believe He meant it. His forgiving spirit, His humility. You know, time is getting on here. It's about half done. Anyway, it'll just end whenever time ends. I think I think this is a whole another other sermon, but I just want to drop it. I think about the time you think you're pretty humble. That's about the time the Lord's going to bring something into your life. You having trouble hearing me, brother? Yes. Well, I got lots of volume. I just dropped my voice once in a while, so I'll try to keep it up. <clears throat> The Lord will send something into your life where you're going to have to exercise your humil humility. It's one thing to say that you are something, and it's another thing to have it demonstrated. Isn't that right? And the proof of the pudding is whether you can stand the test. I can minister all kinds of things to you from this pulpit. Absolutely meaningless. Unless I walk in them. Unless you walk in them. They're just words. I've just spoken words to you. And I think there's a, there's a place in our lives, all of our lives, I would include everybody where we could walk in greater humility. Pride is an awful thing. It is the cause of many woes. Well, being clothed in the Lord Jesus Christ includes a lot of things. His long-suffering, His gentleness, 
And we could go on in a long, long list. This is what God has revealed to us that is our heritage. And I'm, I'm using the Phillips now. The Phillips translation. It is through Him at the cost of His own blood that we are redeemed, freely forgiven through that full... Did I give you the reference? Ephesians 1, 7 to 11, Phillips. Freely forgiven through that full and generous grace which He has overflowed into our lives and opened our eyes to the truth. I tell you, truth is a wonderful thing. It's wonderful in the natural and it's wonderful in the spirit. If someone comes to me and says something to me, I want to feel in my heart it's truth. That there's not, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. When my wife comes to me and tells me something, I believe every word she says. Now, maybe it took me a few years to realize that whatever she spoke to me was truth. But I got to know her. And I got to know that she didn't tell lies. She didn't tell me lies. She didn't tell me half-truths. Well, I don't think so. Pretty good, Irene. Truth! You can deal with truth, but you can't deal with something where you don't have the truth. Is that right? Amen. For God has allowed us to know the secret of His plan. Listen to this. God has, no, has allowed us to know the secret of His plan. And it is this. It is this. He purposes in His sovereign will that all human history shall be consummated in Christ. That everything that exists in heaven or earth shall find its perfection and fulfillment in Him. And here is the staggering thing. That in all which we will... Want, uh, uh, that, in all, that in all which will one day belong to Him, we have been promised a share. You think about that for a minute. I know we don't walk with the Lord for what we're going to get. I hope we walk with the Lord because we love Him. I hope that my children don't just show their kindness to me their love to me because they think that, you know, someday Dad is going to be off to glory. And he's going to leave everything behind. And you know, I think he's got a couple of bucks anyway that he might, he might just pass on to us. I hope that's not even in their minds. Because it's unimportant. But I've often said, what's ever there, you're welcome to. Because I'm not taking it with me. We have been promised to share. Ephesians 6, 10 and 11, and I've got to, I've got to hurry. Uh, Ephesians 6, 10 and 11 says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. I don't think we have to be weak. We can feel weak in our physical bodies. I think it was Paul that said that the, the spirit is willing, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Our flesh is often weak. 
But I'll tell you, as Brother Miller testifies, having gone through what he's gone through, his spirit was always strong. And, and, and I believe there's a place in the Lord where our spirits can be strong. We can be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. It says there again, to put on the whole armor of God. The armor of God is the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the light. He is light to our pathway. He is light, the light of our very being, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, that craftiness of the devil, the cunning of the devil, the the shrewdness, the slyness, the cleverness, the foxiness, the guilefulness. Of the, of the enemy. He is a formidable foe who comes as a roaring lion and also as an angel of light. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know that? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, we need the whole armor of God. I believe that we live We actually live right today as described in Isaiah, the fifth chapter and the 20th verse. I'll read 21 and 22. And then I've got to close pretty quickly. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. We are living in a time of great turmoil. A time of violence and great corruption. Darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and the glory shall be seen upon thee. Hallelujah. I could go on a little bit further and give you a few more scriptures. But I think I will close there. And just say in closing, <clears throat> that although darkness is on every side, although we rub shoulders with some pretty formidable foes from time to time, we must always remember that the God whom we serve is greater than anything that could come against us and we should be encouraged by what the Word of God teaches us when an individual or a people we're, com- we're confronted with impossible odds. God always found a way. He found a way for willing hearts. He found a way for those that wanted to be obedient to Him. And He'll find a way today. He will find a way for you 
and He will find a way for me. Do you believe it? Do you stand on it? Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Other announcements? The young people's today will still be at 2 o'clock. The uh, wedding that's going on is supposed to be out of here by 2. So, yeah, 2 o'clock for young people's. Activities this afternoon for the children are as follows. We usually have uh, a bunch of activities that uh, take up the afternoon. Some of them involve water, games, various fun activities. Some of it's going to depend on what our weather situation turns out to be. Right now it looks good. Uh, make sure your child is prepared for uh, some water activities. Let's just put it that way. Bathing suit and a towel would be a great idea. We will all meet at 2 o'clock in the cloud room. Preschoolers and school age children meeting up in the cloud room at 2 o'clock. Um, some of our numbers will determine what we do as well, but if you could show up there. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to put your name down on the volunteer sheet, that would be great if you could put your name down there so I can see how many helpers I have. And all volunteers, if you could show up at 1.30 in the cloud room, that would be fantastic. So last night at the children's service, we didn't really get a chance to thank Joe and Elizabeth. So I just wanted to thank them for all their work and ministry to our children. And um, I know they've done it under difficult circumstances this week, and yet their ministry has really blessed us and our children. And it also turns out this, this month is their 20th anniversary. So can we just all give them a clap of thanks as well as congratulations? <laughs> I need one male body for tonight. Earl is going to be there. His wife volunteered him in case he doesn't remember. I need one body for the men's dorm. One body. Thanks, Phil. I just want to take uh, just a half a minute and uh, tell you all a little bit about our young people. Um, I've been blessed with the opportunity to kind of work with them for quite a number of years and uh, you would not believe the difference and the growth in our young people over the few number of years that I've been serving them. You, you can be parents, you can be very, very proud. They're, they're just, it's wonderful. That, that ministers to our communities to our schools, all around in a tremendous way. So you can be uh, very, very proud. It's just been a privilege that I've had of being able to work with them and uh, it, the growth and, and uh, that I've seen over the, probably the last five years is, I, I can't believe it, how much they've grown. And it's not a growth as an individual, it's a growth as a corporate body. The young ones coming in are, are not separated from the ones that are older. They're not immature in the sense of knowing what uh, their responsibilities are. And that's the Spirit of God that does that. It's, yes. not, it's not anything else, so praise the Lord. It's enjoyable to be here and to look over the crowd and to be only able to see Beckett. He <laughs> can't see the rest of you, I just want to see him. Hi, Beckett. <laughs> His dad is really shy. <laughs> um, just a little bit on the wedding today at 1 o'clock. Uh, they'll be starting to assemble here probably in the next half hour. Um, where if you see people needing some direction for parking, just 
uh, if they roll down their window or you tap on their window, just make them feel at home. Most of you will be in eating and so it's probably, you won't run across them, but we're gonna try to be out of here by about a quarter to two. And if the wedding goes on a long time, guess who's to blame? <laughs> Me. So I'll try to get uh, the wedding going along. But this is a wonderful day where God is going to join two people and make them one in Christ. And they both want to walk in the things of the King and of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you would uh, welcome them if you see them. Um, and uh, we're just thankful that you're making room for them. Then the first about 20 rows, if you would move your belongings just even to the side for the, uh, right after the service, and then when they come in and fill in the center area, uh, they'll be able to have, not have to dodge anything that might be yours. So if you wouldn't mind doing that. And uh, praise the Lord. We're, I, I just, my wife and I just did a test run on dinner, and it's excellent. So. <laughs> God bless you, y'all go and eat. <laughs>